That does not say that Jesus Christ came in flesh and crucified and has a point. That is a false witness and a false witness. Amen, amen. What kind of fast do you do? No fish, no eggs, no oil, no dairy. I will make a video later about fasting. It's a different one. Yeah, it's a different one. Yeah, but we don't eat veggies, we don't eat fish. 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 We don't eat Okay. okay. You're cooking, man. You're cooking right oh, now. Warner, 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 go on. Get in there, get in there. Warner, go on. I'm good. I think they want a little bit. Can we have a little discussion for the cameras? What do you want to talk about? I don't know. You just give us your views on Christianity and we'll just talk about them. Not, we don't have to debate. We can just dialogue if you like. Okay. So, so what are you? Let's start with I'm a, I'm an Eastern Orthodox. East, what does that mean? So a lot of times people say Orthodox, they start off by saying a place. Yeah, because you know, they're... People say I'm an Arabic Muslim. They don't say I'm an Indonesian Muslim. They just say Muslim. That's well, the number one thing when you hear Orthodox. I'm, I'm a Serbian Muslim. What does that mean? As That's just, country, just tell me, tell me what well, you Eastern just refers typically to the fact that the East and West had a split in the schism in 1054 between what becomes the Roman Catholic Church and the Eastern Church. We call us a particularly Eastern Orthodox to distinct us from the Oriental Orthodox in Egypt, Ethiopia, Armenia, who we have Christological disagreements with. So it's just to point out the distinction in between, because they also call themselves the Oriental Orthodox in Arabic. For them, Oriental East, it's pretty much the same word. So we only say it in English really to distinct in just normal conversation, we just call ourselves orthodox. Right. It's just for the sake of making sure that it's clear what position we are holding to. That would just be Chalcedonian Christology. That would just be basic stuff like Diophysitism. So as opposed to their view of uh, strict Miaphysitism or monophysite. I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. I'm not <laughs> Don't worry, we're just, we're just having a little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said Eastern Orthodox. So yeah. Uh, Serbian Orthodox, Russian Orthodox. I go to a, I go to a uh, Greek church. Okay, excellent. Yeah, yeah. Just, just ask them. No, no, come, come. I want to, I want to have a little dialogue with you, man. I'm not trying to, not trying to. What do you want to talk about? I'm like I'm saying, I'm trying to hear your views on on Christianity. You normally have a lot to say on your. How many gods do you believe in? One. One God. Is yeah. Jesus God? Absolutely. Let's deal with that one. So, who did Jesus pray to? The Father. Okay, that sounds like there's more than one now. How well, can, there's how can more God pray to because there's more than one hypostasis in the Godhead. There's not more than one God, because God in this case refers to the nature, the divine nature, as uh, as mentioned in Second Peter one four, the divine physis in Greek. So we understand there's one nature. That's what we refer to when we say one God. These persons have the nature. God is one in nature, tr try and hypostasis, but the hypostasis aren't separate beings, because being is once again proper to the nature. So there's one being in three persons. What's that word you're using? Hypostasis. Well, what's your definition of that? Person, individual subsistence and a rational so they're, nature. They're separate or they're together? Distinct, not separate. What's the difference between distinct and separate? Well, separable means they can be taken apart. Yeah. We're not saying they can it's be taken apart. semantics. I can't, I, I, it's I not semantics, it's metaphysically different. Separation implies like this, I can separate this from myself, but a distinction just implies that there is a difference between two things without being able to separate them. And they're different insofar as their identity as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. They're not different insofar as their nature once again. Okay. So, are you sure you believe in one? Absolutely. I believe in one God. Okay. So, when you pray, do you pray to God or you pray to Jesus? Either or. It's the same thing. Either is that that mean that applies too. <laughs> yeah. See how the language is already. You can you, you can make a linguistic point if you want. The point is I could say is, I could say oh God or I could say oh Jesus. I'm just saying there's not really a distinction between saying either of those things. Okay. It's the it's like the it's, okay, it's, it's okay. like the difference between saying oh Ya Allah and Ya Rahman. It's just you can say either or, but you're referencing back to the same being, right? That's just two names. Yeah, that's the point. I'm mean, just giving you two names of persons in the Godhead. You're saying two distinct not, beings. See, you need to not say names. separate entities. These are distinct persons, but they are one being. So that's just not characterizing what I said correctly. So is that your contention, Christianity? That we're allegedly tritheists or polytheists? Is that your contention? No, that's just why. That's what I don't resonate. It never makes sense to me. Well, I, I just to people, like, broke it down. Let me explain. I speak to Ethan Orthodox, Catholics, mm -hmm. Jehovah's Witnesses, Christian Scientists, Mormons. Everybody has a different definition. Yeah. Whether it's a form, it's a distinct being. Jesus is God. There's only one God. There's three gods. There's the Holy Spirit. Which, which, which Christians are you talking to that said there's three gods? 
Oh, a lot. The, the, the Christians are never consistent about what they believe. Well, anyone who told you... I've never heard the hypotheses. I've never heard Well, that's, that's the standard formula that has been for centuries. For two, nearly 2,000 years, this has been our standard formula, formulization. I mean, once again, I don't know any I'm Christian who says... The first time I've heard a Christian say, like, I ask, okay, you believe in one God, and then he says, yeah. either or. If you played to one, you wouldn't use the word either. I don't understand what you mean by that. You oh, said no, you believe yeah, in one. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you say you believe in one, but yeah. you know, asked, who do you pray to, Jesus or God? You said either one. No, I'm saying either, I'm saying two. either or. Well, either or, you can twist or, my language if you want, but as I already made clear, we're talking about hypostases. We're talking about the fact that it, any of them are God according to us, but we still pray to any of them as God. There's not really a distinction in regards that they are God. But there's no difference between that and saying you can call upon any of the names of your God and it's still referring to the same being. That's not necessarily a problem. Yeah. Yeah, no, th that sort of rhetoric is why I love Christianity and why Tohi makes sense to me. The but that's not rhetoric. That that's calling it rhetoric isn't, you know. I'm not calling it rhetoric. I'm just you did. You said it's. You said that sort of rhetoric. The way you're explaining it right now, just, it still doesn't make sense. That's called a personal incredulity fallacy. So appealing to your own lack of understanding of a thing does not entail a thing is not true. That's fallacious. This is Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel. Hey, don't call, don't, hey, yo, don't call her a prostitute. He just called her a prostitute. Uh, interrupted us over there. So. It's okay, it's okay, bro. I don't, I don't really want oh, to. Oh, no, because I want to engage with what you think about my beliefs, right? Because you say I, I, it. Is that, sure. what, is that what you really want? Or you just yeah, want yeah, yeah. some clout? Mm, I can put it with God as my witness. I have no interest in clout. Which God? My God. The Lord our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <laughs> I was just curious because, you know, he says a lot about our faith online. I just want to engage with him in a dialogue. I think that's fair for a critic of our faith to engage with someone who wants to answer some criticisms. I, 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 and I explain. Like, well, the, reason, the reason that I love Christianity is because I've never heard a, like, an answer that makes sense to me. And you're saying that my lack of understanding is, is wrong? Well, well I'm saying starts, that appealing... Well, faith all starts from understanding. If something doesn't make yes. logical sense to me, if I don't understand all it, I was I'm not going to believe in it. All I was stating... It's all I was personal. stating. I'm not, I'm not, it's not a personal attack on your faith. Well, it just it doesn't make sense to me. Well, all and I was, even now, the way you explain it, hypostasis... Yeah. Yeah. Either or, distinct. It still, it still doesn't make sense, and I don't yeah. think anybody will ever be, maybe able well, to Well, it's made sense and been understood quite consistently throughout many fields of philosophy and theology for centuries. So that's not true. But what I was pointing out there is appealing to I don't understand this or this doesn't make sense to me doesn't actually prove the thing in question false. That's called a personal incredulity fallacy. So your reasoning is logically flawed. So it doesn't follow. Yeah, to I have a question for you. Are you a hypocrite? Sometimes. <laughs> is that what Jesus taught you? No, Jesus taught me to be better, but I'm also a human who you falls and makes mistakes. Go on. Because your Christian sister is cursing. Oh yeah, I disagree brother, with her. But, but you don't say anything to her. Oh, I do. If someone says something towards him, well, towards her, then you said something. Well, once again, we all know Shalini. Shalini's got a particular way. But calling a woman a Shadamuta, which is a prostitute or whore in Arabic, I was just telling him that by engaging well, in she's this, cursing the greatest I agree. Man to ever step I agree. Her. She shouldn't be doing that in that manner. I've never disagreed. I don't go around the park doing that. I don't think I'm known for doing that. I think I don't have any particular reason why I should be lumped in. I was just stating that regardless of that, as a Muslim man, do you really think he needs to be following around a tiny woman like that calling her a Sharmuta? As a Muslim man, genuinely. Do you think? Uh, I, I don't agree with that, but I don't There you go. So all I was telling you. I was wondering. Hello there. Imagine. Are you Sneeko? Yeah. It's good to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm a Christian. Right, do you mind if I have a dialogue? Hi, right, brother. Hello. We've got a Christian but ethno nationalist over there. Would you be interested? You know who? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that, there's a ribbon in there. Uh, I'll show you something. Yeah. No. He, he looks Jewish up there. Hey, let's talk. Sure, sure, sure. You see. Sure. So I was wondering what your perspective was about uh, the preservation of the Bible and the Quran. Right, the, the Quran has never been changed. In, uh, never been changed. Never so there's changed. only one Quran. Yeah, it's only, only, only one version of the Quran. Is, only one version changed. of the Quran. Yeah, and, and since then, like, people have been able to recite it, even if all the Qurans were burned. We'd be able right, to right. Because the oral tradition, you know exactly what it is, so you can recite it. Oh, I heart. can't recite it, but people can God memorize can. it. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Brothers can. So, do you accept that there's ten kilaats of the Quran, ten different readings? Sure. Okay, but those ten different readings are obviously different, right? Okay. So, if they're different, then there's not one Quran. There's ten Qurans. Okay. So, do you take that back? That there's only one Quran. I. That's the first time I've heard that. But, well, no, you. Well, I mean, I, I said it to you. You accepted it, so I assume you know about it, right? You're not just taking my word for it. What are the ten versions? 
No, so there's uh, different citations, like, just like there's different accents. There's a British accent, there's a Texan accent, there's an English accent. There are no accents. Uh, different accents. Who are you going to believe, a Muslim or a Christian? So, really? Is that what you're supposed to answer? So, just, just believe. The difference between the Kiriyat, like, yeah, of course. So it's a famous one. Muhammad Ijab will tell you this. Uh, so I had to chat with him about it. So you have in Surah Al Fatiha, you have Ayah 4, I think it's Ayah 4. Yeah, Ayah 4 myself. yeah so, so uh, Maliki al Madin or Maliki al Madin, owner or king in Arabic. They're two different words. So if you want to read up about this, you can get a book called the 10 uh, Kiraat of the Noble Quran by Dr. Fadal Suleiman, who worked for uh, the Bridges Foundation in Cairo, which is a Dawah Institute. And he's wrote a book, a book about it, where he translates the Quran into English, but not just in one reading, he does it for all 10. So okay. you can read the differences in the Quran for all different 10 valid readings, according to Islamic scholars. Great. Cool. So do you accept then that the Quran is not perfectly preserved? Because no, I, I'll read that book and I'll, I'll see if that's if that's the case. It's the first time I've heard that. Okay. Okay. Well, all right. I think you can see the point that the Quran isn't perfectly preserved, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. That's according to you. Well, that's according to the scholars I quoted. I mean, you can ask Muhammad Ijab, he has the same view. Because the question is, which one is divinely revealed? Is yeah. It well, it gets a bit more complicated because there's supposed to be seven alawites. Also, keep in mind that you guys are Christians. You guys misinterpret everything. Okay. Why would so that's called your, ad hominem. Why would we, why would we that's called ad hominem. That's you think so a man is God. Let's, well, oh, why well, that's ad hominem. Ad hominem. Why would calm down. Your, calm down. Oh, no need to attack someone. No, I mean, it just, it's just it's ad hominem. Common sense. Ad hominem means, that's means that's against them. It's a fallacy that people use in debate when they can't actually address the point. I'm having a conversation. So let's address the point. So according to Islamic Sunnah, the Hadith, Muhammad says there are seven viable different ways that you can recite the Quran. They're called the Aruf. I can get the Hadith, it's Sahih al-Bukhari and others as well. So that must mean there are seven ways of reciting the Quran. But according to your scholars, there's ten. How did that happen? That was the first time I'm hearing that. That's interesting. Yeah. You should look it up. Because what people are saying is that actually, Uthman, you know Uthman canonized the Quran. Do you know about that canonization process? No, no. Was okay, so the third caliph. People like that. Yeah, so, so Uthman put together a committee around 652 time to around 656. And he put together this committee to collect different Quranic materials from different places because there were reports of people arguing about what the Quran was because they differed. He then decided to standardize it into one um, Qureshi dialect, to one standard reading. And then he burnt all the other Quranic materials and he sent it out to the five different cities. So you had Kufa, Shah, Medina, Mecca, and so on. My point is, is that if there's meant to be seven readings, where are they? I, I don't know. Where do you think they are? I think they were destroyed. I think that six out of seven valid readings for your Quran are destroyed and they're not preserved. Yeah, they are within all the recitation we have today. Six out of seven is a majority. Listen, it's a vast listen, majority. Listen, Who do you think destroyed them? This is my good within, friend Sam. Big guy. Love him. Absolutely love him. Who do you think destroyed them? Uh, Uthman. Why because they are within... I don't know. We don't know. I mean, it's a scholarly question. We don't actually know what Uthman destroyed. It just says that there were manuscript, Quranic manuscript material that was destroyed. It was burnt, but they never elaborate on what that was. So, in effect, so you don't think you're just projecting about how all the is this another ad hominem? Just, just a another ad hominem. Okay, so ad hominem. So because how all the, all the, all the Bible so hold on, that's a hold on. You, you don't think you're just projecting oh, hold on. That's you're a security. speaker's corner that's a two -core yeah, you, fallacy. you don't think you're just projecting your insecurity uh, ad hominem, ad hominem. Brother, brother. Ad hominem. that's a two core query fallacy whether, there is, whether it was or was not the case that the Bible was preserved or not because that's why I know it's about Christian you guys just project hold on, I was still your insecurity is about your religion you going? Whoa. you going? It, it walked off alright that was the quickest debate ever the Bible that's fallacious as well have you uh, I don't, I don't know. I'm a conversationalist. I don't have a debate. Do you want to have a debate? Do you want to debate? Do you want to debate? I don't have a debate. I don't have a debate. Yeah, because that's what you tried to do to me as well. You tried to turn it on to me. Don't you think you're number one objective? Would you like to debate? No, I don't. No, you don't. I'm just curious. I think you have intentions of debate. Yeah, I just generally want Muslims to know what scholarship says, and then they can make their own mind up. Yeah. I think that's good way to approach it. Good. Alright, take care. Um, nice, my wife is there. Well, that was a, a lot shorter than I was expecting. <laughs> I was expecting something longer than that. I came in with basically two points. Okay. That there is not one single Quran. There's a very minimum ten, yeah. according to the scholars of today. I, I quoted a source, I quoted a book that he could read this from. Okay. There are ten different Qur'ats. Yeah. So uh, he said, I have no idea. <laughs> and then, <laughs> which I kind of hope would be, you know, he'd know a bit more by now. I know he's been a Muslim for I think maybe over a year or something like that. I don't know, but someone hasn't told him the truth about the Quran. Ah. He's been told, and he told me straight at the beginning, yeah. there is one perfectly preserved Quran. But when I said, actually, here's some evidence to the contrary, it all fell apart, which is a shame, really.
I hope that Sneeko actually goes back and looks at these claims and does his own study of the evidence because the evidence is overwhelming and it comes from Islamic scholars. That's a funny thing. I'm quoting him Islamic scholars and he's like, well, I don't want to know this. So then he leaves. He walks away, which is a shame. Muslims cannot defend their doctrine of perfect preservation. It is a falsehood. It is evident. And um, yeah, I then brought up the point about the Aruf, the fact that there's meant to be seven acceptable modes of the Quran. Where are they? Right. No one knows where they are. They've gone missing. Six out of seven different variants of the Quran have gone, which seems a bit bad to me. But hey, hopefully Sneeko can go look that up and find out more for himself. And hopefully this will be the first step into leading him back to Christ. Have a genuine faith with Christ to have truth with you and not be fighting against truth like the Muslims are today. Right. Sneeko, I hope sincerely you do come to Christ. Yeah. It would be better than, than succeeding in falsehood that Islam is. So. Shalom, 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 shalom. Welcome back to another video. God bless. Now, listen, man, there's so many things to say about <laughs> what Sneeko was saying and the few times that he ran off. I don't really get why he was there to kind of walk away from every conversation, but. I mean, man, God bless Nico. May the Lord truly touch his heart. May he truly want to seek the truth because it seems like, you know, listen, I agree with what he said, right? He found something that he believes, you know, he can understand. So he agrees with it. But to understand this, though, that doesn't mean because you understand something and agree with it, it doesn't make it to be true, right? Many Muslims are following Muhammad, knowing that he married young, right? yet still following him you cannot ignore this and you know what they try to do muslims try to do they try to go find scriptures in our bible without actually finding legit scriptures they just make up stuff about mary or rebecca or whoever it is without finding actual scripture to prove their theories and you know that's the sad part but just because you don't agree or understand um the Christ christianity it doesn't make mean that it's you know what i'm saying and this is why i suggest a lot of muslims look into the new testament read it yourself because this is why christians read the quran or the hadiths because you know it's important to do the research to see and not listen to what other men are saying but truly what's the truth now if we do a simple google a list of monotheistic religion right list of mono the how you spell it monotheistic right here i don't know how to spell that good y'all i mean it, it pops up right here it pops up right here i mean you see judaism you see islam you literally see christianity so because if you're a muslim and you don't agree that it's not one god it doesn't mean it's not it doesn't mean you're tr you're you're correct you know what i'm saying so let's check out this right here an article that talks about and i won't stay too long on this topic because i want to get to the Christ christianity right feel me yeah it's certainly no miracle for a book to be preserved for 14 centuries the dead sea squirrels copies of the bible i mean isn't harry potter preserved <laughs> like what anyway the dead sea squirrels copies of the bible and other writings have survived longer than 14 centuries right and um, this is where a lot of Muslims get it kind of misconstrued with different, like, let's say the NLT or the KJV. These are different interpretations. It's not saying different things. It's literally like, for example, we have the KJV, which it has a certain language, the olden language. And the new KJV has language that we can comprehend a little better today. Like none of it is changing. It's just written differently. Right. Like the Gospels written from different people perspective of what they seen. All of us could be in a room together, write down our experience in this one room and have different perspectives because, yeah, you get what I'm saying. So, um, man, there's so much to say, but it's so uh, it's, it's super unfortunate. I ain't gonna lie. But where was I anyway? The Dead Sea Squirrels. Right. So the copies of the Bible and other right have survived longer than 14 centuries. Right. So Muslims can hardly appeal to the preservation as proof of divine inspiration. Second, it's simply false to say that the Quran has been perfectly preserved. When we turn to the early Muslim sources, which I would check, we find that entire chapters of the Quran have been lost. Something can't be. And you, you, you got to be unbiased at this point. That's a bad argument. And I, I pray that these 
Muslims stop saying it. It's it's just ridiculous, bro. But it also doesn't even prove that the Muslim God is real. The this whole preservation argument, right? But if you find that entire chapters of the Quran has been lost, the large sections of chapters are missing. That ind individual verses were forgotten, and that words and phrases were changed. Indeed, we know that from Muslim reports that Muslims, that excuse me, Muhammad's most trusted teachers couldn't even agree on which chapters were to be included in the Quran. And this is actually a fact. This is literally a fact. But let's check out this moment here. What happens, right? Let's read this real quick, bro. All right. Narrated by Aisha, right? When the verse of stoning and verse of suckling an adult ten times descended, they were written on a piece of paper and kept under my pillow. Following the demise of Prophet Muhammad, the tame sheep ate. And I know some say goat, but some say sheep ate the piece of paper while as we were mourning for his death, right? Bro, I saw how was it preserved with that. Anyway, answer that in the comments below, uh, my Muslim friends. But I want to say this about y'all not comprehending God because it's literally one God, bro. It's one God. And it's crazy to me how... Muslims are defining God, their God, as one, meaning like what? One like what? Like you as a human? So wait, you're defining God as you are as a human. What? We worship one God, bro. Our God is the most distinct God of them all on this planet, right? Because let's really think about it. <laughs> if God created the heavens and the earth, we're talking about God. Listen to this simple point. How would we truly comprehend God? If he's God, there's no way we would ever comprehend God, the knower, the creator of all things. Please don't let this go over your head. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. But Muslims unfortunately miss the entire point of Jesus coming into the flesh. Imagine saying your God can't come into his own flesh. <laughs> Whoa, what type of God is that? I mean, what type of God is that? Like, bro, God came into his own flesh because he's the creator of all things. He can do what he wants, right? So let me ask you a question, Muslims. If your God, Allah, wanted to come into his flesh, can he come into his flesh? And if you say no, <laughs> I think you need to rethink what you're saying. So God came into this flesh to be the mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Why does it say that? Because God put his own spirit into Mary and she birthed Jesus. Remember, Mary was a virgin. She gave birth to the Messiah. He lived perfectly. And what prophet, what person on this planet ever lived sinless none so god being in the flesh now experiencing this life that we experienced for 30 something years right he experienced what it was like to be hungry what it's like to fellowship with us he he humbled himself to <laughs> god sent his spirit humbled himself right and then what happened? He became the last sacrificial lamb, bro. He became that. Why? Because the wages of sin is death, bro. If you sin, what are you owed? Death. Because God is holy. You cannot enter into heaven by being a good little person. It is not real. You're not good. I'm not good. Right? And I know a lot of Muslims be like, oh, I thought Jesus said there's only one good uh the father you know it's interesting why don't well obviously they don't notice because they don't read go back scriptures before that what jesus said i am the good shepherd <laughs> jesus said a lot of things to to kind of uh he questioned uh when people ask him certain things he he will respond in a question so that was one of those moments where he's like what are you trying to say right now you calling me good master not only was he telling him there's only one that's good so if you're calling me good, you know who I am, right? But no, this slips. This goes over a lot of Muslims' heads, bro. But I know I went on a tangent, but I have love and passion for my God. But Jesus said, I and the Father are one, right? They're one, right? And the whole thing with um, 
it's Nico trying to say, oh, who do you pray to? Pray to God, bro. I can literally say, Holy Spirit. I can pray before my video, say, Holy Spirit, lead me, right? Lead me to talk, to edify correctly. I'm praying to God. I could say, Jesus, my Lord. I'm praying to God. I could say, God, my Father, Abba. I'm praying to God. What? Like, what? <laughs> like, bro. <laughs> You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe in shunder. You believe that God is one. Right there is telling you. This is the New Testament, by the way. God is one. You know what I'm saying? Man, then you go to Isaiah. Until the spirit is poured out upon us from on high and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field and a fruitful field is counted as a force. Notice something, right? Notice how Bible scriptures start. We see a capital letter, right? You see a capital letter, right? That's how you start a sentence, okay? Notice any other, uh, uh, I'm about to say, uh, yeah, notice any other letters that are capital here, right? No, you see spirit. The Bible does this thing when it's talking about God, it uses a capital letter. So until the spirit, meaning what? God, right? The earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit. Notice that capital of God was hovering over the face of the waters, right? We check Samuel. The spirit of the Lord spoke by me and his word was on my tongue. Notice what that did right there. Capital S, capital L for Lord, spoke by me and his, why? Trying to differentiate his, capital H. You understand what I'm saying, bro? Man, you know, there's so much, so much scriptures to prove that God is one. Yet, you know, people would, they would, here are the Muslims or whoever, you know, it's unfortunate, bro. But let's let's look at this moment right here. Last verse it talks about the sun exalted above angels, right? The sun exalted above angels, Brody. Listen, <laughs> listen. <sighs> For to which of the angels did he, capital H, at the slow walk, capital H, ever say, you are my son? Today I have begotten you. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. I'm saying it like that because him, father, notice the capitals, right? Right. He's God is literally asking, which of the angels have I said this to? Right. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. And the angel, he says, who makes his angels spirits? Right. And his ministers a flame of fire. But to the son, capital S, he says, your throne. But to the son, capital H, God says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A sept of righteousness is the sept of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your com companions. God is literally worshiping jesus right here this is showing you right here he's literally showing the divinity of christ jesus right christ god came in the flesh to be the mediator between man and god because nobody's good you cannot get to heaven by being a good person it is impossible my friends that's why jesus he god came in the flesh because what he loves us muslims don't they don't realize allah the best thing you could be to him is a servant or a slave when God says we are, uh, he, he's our father. We call him Abba. I can literally call God my father. How amazing is that, right? We literally become adopted by God as children of God, right? You can't say that with, with in the Quran. No, you can't call. And notice, God of the Bible, he's a father even to the Muslims, the unbelievers, who don't accept him because he's God. He loves all of us, right? And I, and I just want to say this to close out, bro. All you got to do is open the Quran, read the first page, open the Bible, read the first page, and you see who's the true creator. It lets you know right there. Allah is this false God who loves himself, who looks in the mirror and butters up his makeup and loves himself. While God is literally answering atheist questions answering the agnostic questions answering the muslim questions answering the once upon a time non-believers questions right he, he's literally showing you how the world was created but many people like these arguments listen we got one time to get it right 
many people rejecting this free gift. There's no difference between Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, any of these other religions. Because why? They all gravitate towards works, right? When God says works cannot get you into heaven, bro. Man, so much more to say. Hope y'all feel the passion. A lot of Muslims already clicked off commenting in the video. If you've gone here as a Muslim, <laughs> respect. <laughs> Listen, that me up. Respect. Feel me? That's patience. That's feel me. You're, you're you're listening. Those are qualities of God drawing you near to Him. You understand what I'm saying? But if you haven't gone here and you're not a Muslim. <laughs> Congratulations, man. You've now heard the truth of God, man. Listen, I do so much research, so much time. Like, my, my computer heats up every time. Look, I can be quiet for a second. Hear this sound. That's my computer. I don't know if you, hopefully you heard it, but that's my computer. It overheats every time, right? But I'm doing this out of love, right? Also, my love for YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's so many factors as to why I'm doing this. I'm be honest. You know what I'm saying? But I want to share the gospel, the truth of the Lord Christ. I'm a believer of the most high God and I do YouTube. That's how I look at this. It's not no ministry or nothing like that. No, nah, I'm not no pastor, but I love God and I want to share the truth. The truth that changed my life and set me free. Feel me? And and, and last last thing I wanted to say about uh the, 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 the tall guy with the black talking about you a hypocrite oh so the christian woman bro what y'all remember that it's like bro what type of childish argument is that no i'm a christian this other person is claiming to be a christian if that person is acting out what that gotta do with me right if that person truly a, we all struggle we all fall short of god's glory nobody's perfect i can't say because that muslim is acting like that that's how all muslims act Though I do believe that Muslims don't read the Quran, right? But, man, it's so much to say. But I love you, my friends. May the peace of Christ be with you. I love you. I'm about to go chill, right? I'm about to, you know what I'm saying, edit this video. And, man, it kind of cooled down because <laughs> this is a lot. <laughs> but I love you, my friends. May the peace of Christ be with within you with you may continuously seek him even in the moments where you don't want to confess your sins man because he's our he's our lord he loves us i love you my friends shalom